Hey guys, welcome to another video and I am back in the forest. You can see here, this is my base. I have some stone walls surrounding the back end of the plain. Got a nice little hut here and some internal walls plus a series of traps that go around the outside of the base. You probably can see as well that I've sectioned off certain areas and this was really to reduce the mutant movement. Now with this video what I plan to do is cover 20 tips for beginners. I did a video like this uh, a few years back and it was very popular and I thought I would do it with the new up-to-date version so we have some brand new incoming tips for beginners. In fact, intermediate players may find some of these useful as well. Okay, let's get started. First tip is, I like to stay near the plane. Now, some players argue against this, saying that the cannibals come to this location. Well, they're going to come anyway once you get to a certain stage in the game. One of the handy things about being by the plane, the reason why I do it, is because it respawns a lot of the stuff inside every time you load back in, uh, restart the game. You can come in and collect up some food. There's like four meals in here. It's plain food, so it doesn't really give you much, but it's certainly very handy. And this is tip two, that these plane sections provide good defense. Look at this in a sense, this is one side of the base. It provides protection down that end of the base and I find that very useful and you can in fact build steps up to the plane and climb onto the plane giving you vantage over the incoming cannibals. Tip 3. Don't be lulled into a full sense of security. In the beginning, it's quiet. And that's bearing in mind I have it on normal setting here. And that's probably where you're going to start, normal setting. It's quiet in the beginning, but once you get enough buildings down, the cannibals will start coming. And when they do, it's pretty common to have cannibals every day. So you need your defenses up. Tip 4 follows on from that. Stone walls are the best defense when you're dealing with the tough mutants. And I'm talking about the, the rhino mutant who charges. Here we've got some more mutants. Who will charge any wooden structure and destroy it within seconds. So I put stone walls up around platforms where I feel it's necessary. One of the nice things about stone walls is the stones respawn on the floor all over the place. So you can just cycle round from front to back and by the time you get there the stones should be respawned and you can just keep building. Tip 5. Find a good supply of arrows. You're going to need them. These pesky cannibals will keep coming at you. And arrows are one of the best ways of dealing with them. Now, a good way of making sure you know where that supply of arrows is, is by placing down a marker. You can build these from your book. We go to the end here. There you go. A marker. Stick marker. You can cycle through and put different colours on that marker so you roughly can remember what is at that location. You can see in the distance here I have a blue flag. If I follow that line I'll come to a camp where I have a good supply of arrows, a series of boxes that I can loot and they respawn every time you come back into the game. So bear that in mind. Tip 6. I love using these skull lamps, especially the ones on sticks you can just place around. The light lasts forever and they are very handy, whereas you know if you put a fire down it will go out pretty quickly. So using these skull lamps is a top tip and I always do it. 
So when you're using the bow, try and get headshots. It will kill them. It can be difficult sometimes. They're, they're quite wily, these cannibals. They move pretty quickly. Especially the uh, ones that uh, run around like dogs. But once you have killed them, you can pick up the bodies and put them onto fires like this one. Let's get that lid again. Use some uh, notes to get it burning. And then you throw the body on. And then it's not long until that body turns into a pile of bones. Then, next to it, build, next to where you build your fire, construct a bone holder. There, bone basket. You need 21 sticks to do that. Put it next to that. And then when they break up into the bones, you can collect it in the basket like this one here. You can hear, there you go, it breaks up. Another really handy thing about burning the cannibal bodies, it gets rid of all the disease in the area. And you also get skulls out of it, which as I've pointed out already, are really good for making the skull lamp. Economical, you get building materials, you can use these to make fences. So one of my priorities when I first set up the game and my base is to put some drying racks down so I can hang some meat on there and also to find a coastal location where you can kill and gather the turtle shells and then you turn them up and you can build these water collectors which makes perfect sense. So you put these down and then when it rains like it is at the moment they will gather water which is very handy. So that's in my internal base, right in the core of the base I've set that up. Food and water. So tip nine, uh, another thing that I do to manage my inventory is I put up some large cabinets next to the plane so that when the stuff spawns in on the plane I can stash some of it on these shelves because you can't carry too many. You can only carry so many items and by having these you can store them on the shelves when they spawn in and you're not wasting them in a sense. These cost eight logs to build the, it's the large cabinet. And I put that next to the plane quite often or in a part of the base. There are a number of traps in game. This is the log fall trap. If you line it up with a fence, you tend to find that the cannibals run along the fence line. And just like that one there, they can be crushed by the falling log. There we go. So that is pretty, they're pretty good these. I, I quite like these traps. You can reset them using one stick, like so. You've got to be careful because you will take damage if this log hits you, if this falls on you, trigger it. But they can be very effective. As I say, I find the most effective place to put them is at the end of these uh, fences. Definitely the most effective place. And you can see it worked a treat there. I took out two or three cannibals. I think my favorite trap has to be the happy birthday trap, this one here. It does require some resources, 20 sticks, four logs, two stone, and two rope. Uh, rope becomes scarcer the longer the game goes on. So they can, they're, they're fairly expensive, but they're well worth it. And you can reset them using a stick and there's a trigger mechanism at the back there you can see and when the cannibals walk or run over them towards them this way they will be impaled and die and then you can reset them collect the bodies and as said before you can then collect the bones from those bodies for your resources but they are awesome and one of the nice things about it is they also act like an alarm so they make a very distinctive swishing noise when they go off and it tells you if you weren't necessarily aware of it that that cannibals are close at hand the happy birthday trap my favorite tip 12. let's have a look at uh, 
gathering resources. So for me, my ethos as I run around in the forest is to constantly pick up stones, slash at animals, take down branches and twigs so we can gather those sticks up so that I have got a constant. So if I'm heading in one direction, I'll be thinking, right, stone, sticks, we have got the maximum number of those. And as far as the stones are concerned, I will have stone walls being made all the time. Because once you've collected five stone, and that's all you can carry, and you may as well drop it off a wall as you run past it. So I think it's just a question of being efficient and uh, building as quickly as you can because as I said before cannibals will soon start coming to your base. So we're being as efficient as possible gathering all the time but to make that even better build bags. So you've got your stick bag for example. Now that requires one rabbit skin, two ropes and three cloth and then you can carry up to 20 sticks. Same goes for the pouch. Um, you have to equip the pouch actually to use it when you're gathering berries, but that will enable you to gather up blueberries you can eat and they restore your hunger and your thirst, um, which is very handy. And then you can also get a rock bag. Now I don't have it on this particular character. They're hard to come by. You have to go and get a boar skin from the north, head north on the map. Tip 14. So if you look across here, see these trees, these, these tall trees here. The cannibals can climb some of these. And then they can jump down from those trees over high walls. So a good tip is to get rid of all the tall trees close to your walls. And then they won't be able to jump in to your base. In the southeast corner of the island is a cannibal camp and it's a dangerous place to go there's no doubt about it but it's well worth it there's plenty of resources here plenty of cannibals you can see there there's also this a stack of skulls outside a cave entrance I would highly recommend you get to this location so you can find the map the map is down here. It's pretty grim down here. But if you do make it down here, the map is found here along with the compass. See, there's another compass there we've got on already. And the map is found in this location. The map is so handy. A parent out with the compass, it's even better. This is the mutant you really have to beware. I call him the rhino. He's the charging mutant. He will destroy your wooden structures just as if they're paper. He'll just tear through them. And you can hear him coming a mile and off. And when he does, you want to try and draw him away from your camp. Now you're going to need something in the way of him because he will catch you. But it's the only way you're going to save all your hard work unless you've got stone walls up protecting your base. Fishing is a really handy way to get yourself some food for your drying rack. All you have to do is stand at the side of a pool, look down so you get that chopping motion, that downward chopping motion. And swing your axe into the water. Now, it's, it's a bit of a pain. They have to be quite close to the edge for it to work. But you can carry three fish. And when you do, go and hang it up on your drying rack. Now, I have marked this particular location with a yellow flag. It's quite close to my base. You can see it here. You can cycle through these flags by pressing these markers by pressing the R but I can come here and get some fish so 
another nifty little tip you may not be aware of is when you build a platform you can hang a rope off it that you can climb up so if we go to the book so you can build a platform here and it takes so many logs depending on how tall the structure and then from that platform you can hang a climbing rope it just takes one rope now the reason to do this is that basically steps if you had steps up to this platform which is perfectly viable you know to build they are vulnerable to the rhino attack and to cannibal attack whereas if you've got a rope and then you surround the tower with rock like this you can then jump on the rope pretty effectively and climb up before the cannibals get you and then you've got a decent platform to look down and shoot at the cannibals who are attacking without the steps or the stairs being in the way which they can actually jump onto although they're not inclined to climb and use the things that you make they still can do it just through the action that they have when they jump attack and this may seem like a fairly straightforward tip but it's something I always hold to and that is I never work through the night I always sleep at my camp one of these or up in the cabin up there because the cannibals are much more common at night they'll come for you and it's much harder to defend against them when it's dark you also don't quite see things as clearly even if you've got the place well lit up now you have to make sure you're on your night day cycle pretty well pretty precisely because if you leave it a while and then you sleep you can slowly impinge upon your day cycle so make sure as soon as it goes dark get to a camp get to one of your um, bases and sleep so that the night passes and then you have the day ahead of you tip 20 and by far the most fun way to travel around the island in the forest is by zip wire I mean the benefits are obvious you travel so quickly and you obviously need to go from high to low but they get you to a location pretty smartly quickly I've got a couple set up here this one leads down to one of the cannibal camps down there where I can loot and this one leads to the containers over there where we've got some circuitry and some um, cannibal motives which you can pack down and gather cloth for so that's the final tip guys i hope you found this video useful if you did click the thumbs up if you've got any questions add them in the comments section down below and if you're not subscribed already it would be awesome if you could I am thinking about doing some more forest tips videos depending on how this is received. So thank you for watching and I will catch up with you very soon. Thanks again.